reports and information only. For myself, I'll say in the new year, I'll ask folks to please look at your own calendars and see where you could potentially serve as a, as a champion or as a driver of a specific small project or idea that you're passionate about. In this body, we've had a tradition of having champions who go out and study a topic and then provide information on it, a short presentation. We did this on participatory budgeting. Uh, we've done it on other topics, and we found it to be valuable. I believe it's something we can do informally as a team and vote on it. Um, it may be something that's of interest to you if you're not already on an ad hoc or if you'd like to add to that. But I know we're all plenty interested in various topics, and we want to bring those forward. So at the next meeting, if you have additional items to champion, please let me know as we prepare the agenda. Item 4B, Frank Ponciano, Office of Councilmember Rocha. Hi, Frank. Thank you, Chair. Hi. Thank you. Uh, good night, everybody. Um, my name is Frank Ponciano, you see the agenda. Uh, I am the new policy aide for uh, the Office of Councilmember Don Rocha. Uh, who, as you guys all know, is your council liaison. And so you're going to be seeing a lot more of me uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, I left a limited amount of business cards with uh, Sabrina, so if anybody has any questions outside of this, um, you can always reach out. Uh, I'll get more next month. But uh, if we get in, I'll continue the tradition that Jackie... Uh, have with you guys bringing in some some uh, happenings around the city that I think are pertinent uh, to the work you guys do. The first one, the first two are actually about housing. The last month was a really busy month for the housing department. Uh, and we had two developments that I'd like to touch on. The first one is the rent control council decision. Uh, on November 14th, uh, the council voted 6-5 to maintain the maximum allowable uh, annual rent in increase. Uh, at 5% for apartments covered under the city's rent control ordinance. The council also decided in the same night that under this ordinance, property owners would not be able to roll over percentage increases they did not use from year to year, a practice that's called banking. Uh, and it was a very, very busy night. Uh, during the same meeting, uh, the council approved the creation of a registry to track rents in ARO units. So these rent control units will be tracked uh, so we could see how the rents are going, uh, what the movement is at the 5% cap. Any questions on that before I move on? The second item is the one that just happened yesterday, the Bridge Housing Communities uh, decision, uh, December 12th, uh, Council voted 9-2 to direct housing staff to use the criteria they had proposed to rank candidate sites for bridge housing communities throughout San Jose. The now approved scoring system will consider whether the city itself owns a site, the size of the land, and how close a site is to schools and residential areas. They put together these criteria with the feedback of the community. If you guys remember back in, in uh, July and August, there was quite a ruckus, right, um, with the community being upset about many things, some of the things they talked about are the very things that we are now going to use to uh, judge whether or not a site is appropriate for this project. Staff will come back to Council in January with the top three sites to be chosen. Council has decided one site with 40 tiny homes, as they're called, uh, will be a good starting point. And that is probably going to look like a one-year process until things could get uh, off the ground. Okay. Any questions on that item? When you say staff, uh, uh, when you say staff's going to be looking at different sites, is that the housing department or? or yes. So the housing department is going to be considering uh, a list of sites that they actually published on the report uh, that was um, on the consideration yesterday. Uh, if you, I don't know if you had had the chance to go check it out on their uh, website or in yesterday's agenda, um, there are a list of sites as well as the APNs that are going to tell you exactly where those sites are. Uh, and out of all those sites, I believe we are up to 37 uh, city-owned sites and then also water district sites 
as well as uh, Caltrans. VTA. VTA, correct. Uh, VTA sites um, that are also going to be considered all across the city. Now, keep in mind, out of all of those sites, uh, three will make the final cut and one will be selected for a 40 unit site. So, and it should be something that the communities that are involved should be very, very much, uh, they should have a say, uh, and there will be a lengthy process. This is why it will take a year only for us to say, okay, this is a, a site that passes environmental um, tests and everything else, and then we can get building. Okay? Any other questions? Yeah, hi, uh, Terry Mark, District 9. Um, I have a question just in regard. One of the things we're starting to hear a lot of feedback is uh, the cost of these units mm -hmm. at seventy-three thousand dollars a pop, mm -hmm. and you know, so I'm having to answer to some of that. And you know, so any input you guys can have on that would be really, really helpful when more information comes out. Mm -hmm. The question I have is: Is that because of a Gensler design, or was that because of the process? And then, does it also include the cost of you know, like all the soft costs also? Yeah. Well, if you go onto the report, you'll see the breakout of the different estimates, right? And what looks like just the side, the, the, the house, the home. What does that cost? Um, the mayor's estimate said it would be around twenty uh, twenty thousand, um, just the build out of the home. Um, but that doesn't include site development, um, which is a considerable considerable cost. Uh, and also need to take into account the ongoing services that are going to be part of, of this process. So, I, you know, I, I don't have the numbers uh, memorized as, as the housing staff surely does. Um, but I encourage you, or I could follow up with you and, and let you know uh, exactly what the breakout is. Now, these are just estimates, and yes, uh, it is to be assumed and pretty surely so that. The Gensler uh, design is, is an ambitious one, and, and so um, that definitely drives some of the costs. As we see, some other cities are doing this with with cheaper costs, but the product is also vastly inferior, right? And so folks are still sleeping in the cold, um, but the, the, the tough sheds are pretty, pretty cheap. Um, as to the position of Councilman Rocha himself, you can go and check out his memo. Uh, I know that cost was one of the things that he focused on uh, considerably. Uh, and I, as the discussion went yesterday, there was a lot of talk about what does it look like when the private sector steps in uh, and helps out with construction and, and also when we are able to cut costs wherever we can as this process moves along. Any other Thank questions? You. So, question. Uh, so, any information if we could ask you to send it to Sabrina or Garcia, and then just so we're not exhausting you, sure. um, and then anything um, we can handle that through to our staff. Sure. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, any other comment, Gary? Oh, uh, yeah, Commissioner yeah. Cunningham. Were you through? I. Uh, I mean, I'm wondering if you have well, a question. Well, I was going to say, uh, if, yeah. would it be possible in the future that uh, for you could provide us with a uh, copy of your report to uh, be included uh, so we can follow along. Most absolutely. You know, so you, it would come if you forward that to Sabrina. Mm -hmm. It's a lot helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get better, guys. <laughs> Any other questions? Anybody else? Now, if you don't mind, Chair. Uh, <coughs> so, hold on just one second. Yeah. So do we take public comment on his update? Are you done? When he's done. With the entire update, I am not, no. Okay. Yeah. But after he's done, he'll come. Thank you. Please continue. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to end on a more lighthearted note. Um, we're all about business here, and I could get a little bit tiresome. Uh, so I wanted to give you a couple updates that happened in the last month that that I think are pretty interesting and, and um, upbeat. Uh, the first one is the Great 408. I'm not sure if you guys heard, but if you guys visit the website uh, great408.org. Uh, you'll see a project that Sal Pizarro and the mayor, uh, Sam Ricardo, uh, put together in which you could go in and submit some fun facts, uh, some points of pride about the city of San Jose, and I know there are many uh, as, a, as a student of the history of the city and, and, and somebody who uh, is coming from the outside. I'm a native of New York City, and I really, coming here, appreciate how special this community is. 
Um, I just wanted to share three facts that are that are interesting to me that they have so far as we go on in time and as people like yourselves uh, submit different fun facts each week they're going to be adding facts uh, and you can go and check them out uh, and learn a little bit more about your community. Uh, one of the facts that I thought was pretty interesting was uh, Avaya Stadium, the home of the earthquakes, uh, has the largest outdoor bar uh, in North America. <laughs> I think that's a pretty interesting uh, uh, fact. The other one is uh, San Jose is the birthplace of Tuggles, uh, which is the, the sandwich uh, brand. Um, yeah. We used to call it two goals when we first got here, my wife and I, and somebody corrected me. Um, and the last fact is San Jose is the first incorporated city in the state of California. I think that's a pretty interesting fact. There are so many historical um, aspects of the city. I, I encourage you guys, if you guys don't already, um, to go out there and check them out and learn more about them. So visit for the great, great 408.org. Uh, submit any facts you want. And the very last thing I wanted to bring up is I want to talk a little bit about the Sonic Runway, which is right outside. Uh, if you guys have not checked it out, go and check it out. Uh, it's amazing to see how, how much activation there is in this previously really dead area, um, you know, where, where you didn't see young folks uh, uh, coming from SJSU and, and other places coming in to hang out. I came in uh, one of these Saturdays and it really did remind me of, of a New York City environment in which people are just hanging out, having a good time, tons of traffic on a Saturday night. Really loved it. The public art piece uh, is coming from Burning Man. Um, and uh, just a quick uh, fun fact, the last stop it had it was in London. Um, and uh, the lights as you see them moving are replicating the real life sounds that are in the area. Uh, if you walk through it, you'll hear music that is playing from the sides. And as you see the ripples move, that is moving at the speed of sound, which is at 343 miles per second. And so I encourage you guys to go check it out and appreciate that. And it's just a really cool thing. Okay. That is it. Any public comments or questions on that? So you're the perfect person to bring to a Trivial Pursuit game. <laughs> Is there a public comment? I think you were, Ed? No? Uh, what, what was your name? Bruce? Yeah. Did you want to? Oh, I was just questioning. 343 miles yeah. per second. You said the speed of sound? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's Mach 1. I, yeah, okay, let's, I, well, I, uh, <laughs> we'll correct that for you. You can actually go to Wikipedia, <laughs> look for it on your phone. All right, well, listen, thank you very much, Frank. We look forward to reading your uh, summary next time. We look forward to seeing you next time. Great. Staff report, Sabrina Cargosia. So, first, a, a couple of mine. Um, however, I did want to follow up on something that I reported on previously, which is the local update to census area uh, pilot project, which we completed last Saturday. Um, this is the project to basically get a more accurate list of all of the addresses of all the people, and that includes knowing how many families live in a household. So. Uh, this was a large nonprofit pull in a bunch of different people from different organizations who went out and were trained to figure out how to look at visually look at addresses, not going talking to people, not going on anyone's property um, to determine whether there were additional households, families living there. So garage conversions, in-law units, RVs on property, tents, any of that would count as that as long as you can attribute an address to it then they can receive a census form in the future. Um, in point of fact, there were five, six nonprofits, three Vietnamese, no, seven, seven nonprofits who participated. Um, Viet Unity, ICANN and UVAN, uh, Sacred Heart, Somos Mayfair, and Com University. And I think that's it. Um, so we completed within the week, we did nine neighborhoods, um, and that was a total of how many census tracts? It was a total of about 10,000 addresses, but um, so a very small portion compared to the number actually that exists here in the city. Um, but it was a total of, 
I guess, twice as many census tracts. So 18 census tracts. Um, anyway, I mentioned this all because it's probably going to come back in the spring um, when we do this whole thing citywide. And I have a feeling that this body is going to be called upon to let folks know that this is coming because it can be a little disconcerting to see people walking around your neighborhood with their phones and staring at people's homes. Uh, anyway, so that's that update. I also wanted to call your attention to um, there was supposed to be a decision made by council yesterday based on the council appointment commission. I can never remember the name of that commission. Um, for the open seats on this committee. However, the decision was deferred yesterday and it was also on the agenda for next Tuesday, so it is coming back next Tuesday. Just wanted to give you guys an update, so there's no new commissioners appointed yet. Was that, excuse me, was that for all the commissions or just this commission? All the commissions, all yeah. That's it? Yeah, perfect. <laughs>